us out somewhere, you say hello, at the old knock on you And you want to know what we looked like many years ago? Oh, oh there we are. Oh, John served in World War II. Did you happen to know what the Enola Gay was? Did they know the Enola? The Enola Gay is the B-29 airplane that dropped the atomic bomb. And Uncle John helped put it in the air. So you're really looking at a celebrity. Um, she wanted us to come and talk to you about life many years ago and about how Crossville used to be. But I want to know how smart you people are. What kind of group are we talking to? So I'm going to ask you a few questions so I'll know how smart you are. How many sides are there to a stop sign? How many? Eight. Smart? Well, <laughs> I should say. All right, listen closely. Railroad crossing. Watch out for the cars. Can you spell that without any R's? Mm -hmm. Railroad crossing. Watch out for the cars. Can you spell that without any R's? Okay, you spell that, T-H-A-T. <laughs> oh, right, listen to she me again. It. Railroad crossing, watch out for the cars. Can you spell that without any R's? T-H-A-T. <laughs> Pretty easy, isn't it? Oh, good. Okay, suppose you're in a race and you overtake the last man, what place would you be in? If you overtake the last man, what place are you in? Fifth. What place? Fifth. <laughs> not, that's not right. Anybody else want to guess? What is it? First place? No, you're in the back. You overtake the very back man. What are you, what place are you in? Sixth. Well, I don't know how many. There might be 14 in the, in the race. Uh, last. So what, would you be in last place or what place would you be in? Well, you really can't overtake the last man because there's nobody behind him. <laughs> See, if you can't be behind the last man, if you were, you'd be last. I don't know. This group's not too sharp. I don't know what. I don't know what we could say to you that. See, we're not first to talk about this, so we wondered what in the world can we talk about that nobody else has told. Uh. First of all, I want to share with you two little songs that were sung many years ago. Did you know a song about Bill Brogan's goat? Anybody know that? Oh, my. Bill Brogan's goat was feeling fine. Ate three red shirts off of the line. Bill took a stick, gave him a whack and tied him to the railroad track, the railroad track. The whistle blew, the train grew nigh. Bill Brogan's goat was doomed to die. He gave three groans of awful pain, coughed up the shirt and flagged the train and flagged the train. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh. <laughs> Always remember and try to bear in mind that the old cow's tail is hanging down behind. It's long and it's fuzzy and it's full of cockaburs, but the old cow loves it just because it's hers. Oh. <laughs> How about that? You all, you all just need, need to be around that bill a while and learn about what it used to be like. Imagine Crossville without very many houses in it. We didn't have a lot of houses back then, just one here and one there. Everybody had to have a cow because you couldn't go over to food land and buy milk, there wasn't a food land. So we had to have a, you had to have a cow and you had to have a garden. So, Everybody had a well, you had 
very few people, well, they didn't have running water in the day I'm talking about. Now, by the way, the time I'm talking about is when modem, you know what modem is today? You know what a modem is with a computer? Well, I'm, talk, when mo, I'm talking about a time when modem meant what Paul done to the hay patches. He mowed them. <laughs> so, see, we're talking about a long time ago. People didn't have running water. They had wells. Y'all show them the bucket that you drew water from the well in. They had a frame thing built up here with a big wooden pole with a rod in it. And you, you wound that thing up and here's the bucket went down in the well and brought your water up. So imagine how much, how many times you had to put that in the well to get enough water to take a bath. Mm -hmm. You know what a wash tub is? You know what? Do these people know what a wash tub is? What's a wash tub? Yes. Oh dear, uh, it's a big, great big yeah. round thing that we set that wash tub, fill the wash tub full of water, set it out in the sunshine, let it get warm. That's why we took a bath in. Didn't have a hot water heater. Didn't have running water. Didn't have inside plumbing. So when you had to do your job, you walked way back out there to the little outhouse. Didn't have toilet tissue. You could use the Sears Roebuck catalog. <coughs> a Sears Roebuck catalog was a wish book of a sort of a thing that came with lots of pictures in it. Pictures of women with pretty clothes on and girls would cut those pictures out for their paper dolls. Um, we didn't have television. I didn't have electricity till after I was married. My, where I lived did not have electricity till after I was married. So we had kerosene lamps and we had wood fires. And we had, uh, sometimes we'd have coal burning. I wish you could be at our, could have been at our house in the, on, in the, on Sunday in the summertime. Crossville had an ice house. And they kept huge squares of ice, like 50 and 100 pounds. 100 pounds would be a block of ice probably the size of a half of this table. And we'd get a small block of ice and take home with us, and we had a little refrigerator thing we kept it in. And on Sunday afternoon, we'd take an ice pick and pick some of that ice off and put it in the ice cream freezer and turn it. Have you ever seen an ice cream freezer that turns? The only one you've ever seen is electric, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So we made homemade ice cream, which was wonderful. Um, there, were, there was electricity in Crossville early on, but they had very unusual little Poles. They didn't have big poles like they have today. They had no bucket trucks when they had a problem up at the top of the pole. There were no bucket trucks. Show them what they used to get to the top of the pole with, John. You boys ought to be interested in this. Can you imagine climbing that pole to get to the top to see what the problem is? And these are called climbers. What he's going to show you. We had a doctor in Crossville, but you know what? He just had one leg. He walked on crutches. He couldn't drive a car because back then all cars had clutches and you had to push the clutch in with your left leg. This is the tool that was carried up the pole to work on the lines with. Ah, oh, safety belt. This is a safety belt. He put he bolted, buckled it on. And then this went around the pole to where you wouldn't fall off. And around your body. Around my body. Mm -hmm. Around the body and around the pole and you, as you're going up this going up this pole. And this is the the tools that normally you would have going up there to carry up. Okay, in this bag here is a pair of gloves. They're made out of rubber. To where you could hold electricity and not get shot. They would withstand 10,000 volts. Wow. And you had to work 
That's all right. I ain't going to. Oh, well, I'm not worried about these. I was just trying to give you room. You'd put, <coughs> you'd put this on here, and that's what you had to work with. And this rubber glove here is what protected you. You can handle up to 10,000 volts and not get shocked with that glove on. He has one other thing about the pole he wants to show you. Well, you had to have something to climb the pole where your feet would slide out with And it's been a long time. Well, the last time I used these was in 1948. This is the left and the right. Put it on your feet and around your leg. You put it on your feet and strap this to your shoe, around your shoe, to hold it to where you can stop this in. Jab it into the pole where you can oh, climb oh, well, up with that. Hold it so he can See, that? it's one strap that I've lost out up here. Huh. When you quit using anything, like it, it always gets shorter and wears out quicker. <laughs> but those stubs would go into that wooden pole and see one foot would go down and stick in and it pulls this one out and raises it up and sticks that in and goes you up a little bit more. This way, and then you take this and go up here, step time. And that's called climbers. These, these were the spurs, what they call the spurs. And he filed that with a file and sharpened it to where it would go into the wood. That's a far cry from a bucket truck, isn't it? The way it just raised it up in there. But see, this was hard work just to climb the pole. But John and his daddy ran, you've heard, somebody has told you about the theater. John and his daddy ran the first projectors. The projector is what has the film in it that shoots the picture down on the screen for you to see. And they had huge rolls of film this big that they fastened onto a machine called a projector. And they watched that and at a certain time they saw a little something up in the corner that told them it's time to change and use the other wheel with film on it. It's a very involved thing. But I told you about the doctor that had one leg. He walked with crutches, and back then cars didn't have automatic transmission. You had to push a clutch in. You boys know about a clutch? You have to push it in to change gear. Okay? John and his father drove for the doctor because the doctor couldn't drive the car. He bought the very first car that had an automatic transmission that was sold in this area. So he could drive, see? He didn't have to push a clutch in with his left leg. A very good doctor, and he made house calls. You didn't go to his office to visit the doctor. He came to your house to visit you. And we didn't have a drugstore to get medicine. You got the medicine at the doctor's office. So, let's see. I had some notes. I'm so old, I can't remember what I was going to say. Uh, she, she remembers everything when I come in late. Um, my uncle had a blacksmith shop. You know where the police department is today? You know the street where the police department? The very next house is where my uncle lived and he had a blacksmith <coughs> shop. He put shoes on mules and horses and he repaired two horse wagons and whatever. He had lots of tools, and his arms and biceps up here were huge. The, the streets were not paved, and in the summer, I mean in the winter, and lots of rain, it got muddy. He had started the Albert Bowl one time, and his car slipped off in the ditch in the mud. Remember, he's a blacksmith with big biceps, and he got out of his car and picked it back up and set it back in the road and went on his way. So, anyway, now, when John and I were really young, your age and younger, 
people slept on mattresses that were stuffed with shucks and grass. Didn't have good mattresses like you have today. But when Franklin Delano Roosevelt was elected president, I guess he had a, a special place in his heart for poor people, and farmers on Sand Mountain were poor. So he came out with a program whereby they gave the farmers fabric. You know that striping that your mattress is made out of? Stripes usually on the mattress. Okay, the government gave the farmer the material and they sewed it up mattress size. The farmer furnished the cotton and the government sent a machine around to blow that cotton in the tick to make a mattress. So a man here in Crossville learned how to do it and Crossville had a mattress factory. Everybody, do you know where East End is? Do you still call it East End? No, ma'am. I don't. <laughs> okay, East End is, uh, okay, the bank, you know where the traffic light is, where you go to Geraldine? <laughs> Along in there and beyond is what we called East End, and the mattress factory was in East End. And he made cotton mattresses for people. They brought him the cotton, and he blew it in this material sewed up and tacked it so that it was a mattress. Did you know Crossville had a bowling alley? Yeah, um, really? they had a skate rink. Pardon me? Yeah, they had a skate rink. Now, I don't know about a skate Did they have a skating rink? When I was younger, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, didn't have a skating rink when I was. No, didn't have when I was young. Uh, they had a bowling alley, though, when I was a teenager and had a pool room. You know what a pool room is? You know how to shoot pool? Okay, they had how many tables they have? Three or four? That's three or four. <coughs> three or four tables in there and you paid, I don't know what you paid to. Uh, a nickel, a nickel a game. Okay. If you had a nickel. All right, so, so uh, had you been told about a mattress factory or a pool room or a bowling alley? See, I was so afraid I couldn't think of anything to tell that you hadn't heard about. <coughs> But, uh, maybe, maybe I did, but children didn't have anything to do. I mean, we didn't have Nintendo, and what else do you do? Okay, so we didn't have a computer, we didn't have a television, so we had to find things to do on our own. And girls sometimes play dolls, and sometimes dolls were made out of just folding up a blanket and pretending it was a baby. But boys played ball, and they, do you know what marbles are? You know yeah. what? All right. We had a few board games. This was Chinese checkers. You ever see Chinese checkers? All right. We had enough green marbles to go in this point and had enough red ones to go wherever. Anyway, we had the right color marbles to go in each point. And you, uh, six people could play, but two could also play. And the point was to, was to get from this point to the one just opposite you. This is where you started, but this is called home. So you wanted to get all of your marbles home first. But see, other people's marbles would get in the way. And you'd jump that man if you could, and then you picked his marble up, and he couldn't get all his home, see. So this was Chinese checkers. This was a board game that we played. But I bet, surely, you, you know about playing checkers? Okay, here's a homemade checkerboard. See, the homemade. All right, I'm sure you don't know about this, but at one time there was just one size of bottle drink. It was a, we called it a Coke. We had, we had grape and orange and RC and Dr. Pepper, but they're all in a six ounce bottle. And they all had caps on them like this. They had to be pulled off with a regular can opener type thing. Bottle open. Okay, bottle open. All right, this is what we use for men. 
see, we used it like this. <clears throat> and then when you've got a, what do you call it, crowning? Mm -hmm. When you've got a king, you can stack two of them up. So this is what we used for men. Now that king, he could move in any direction. You could move him in any direction. If he did, wasn't a king, he had to go one direction all the time. Just the, the one the one, fe one fellows had to go forward, didn't yeah. they? But the king could jump backwards or, or move, whichever way. All right, that's another thing we did. Uh, I want to show you a dime bank. This was our piggy bank. This only holds dimes. But when you get that little bank full, you can tighten the screw. See that screw on top? If you tighten that screw down, it pushes the bottom off and you have five dollars. Wow. Five dollars was a lot of money to us. You know, the tooth fairy, when I was little, the tooth fairy brought a dime. How much does the tooth fairy bring today? A dollar. I would think I was rich if I had two dollars. But see, we could buy a hamburger for 15 cents. And we could buy a bottle of drink or a coat or a nickel. But you know what what people call the bottle of drink <coughs> in my day? They called it a dope. <laughs> a bag of dope. Well see today you couldn't say that because they'd think you were talking about what? Marijuana or some other thing that I don't even know about. But Coca-Cola's and RC's and all that was called a dope back there. Everybody called it that. Now when men got ready to shave, they had some soap in this shaving mug and this was the brush and they'd get that soap wet and get all of this around in there and put all that on their face. And here's what the shave is. This is called a straight razor. Very unlike what your daddy shaved. What's your daddy shaved? What's your daddy shaved? Electric. Okay. What's your daddy shaved? Electric. Who's your daddy electric? How many's not electric? How many's daddy does not shave with an electric razor? Mine does. So what? What does he use? A bitch or something like that. Okay, but this is a straight razor, and they had a wide strap, leather strap, that they rubbed this back and forth on to sharpen it so that it was super sharp. So now you've seen a straight razor. I heard about a man who was shaving one time, and a fly lit on his nose, and he took this razor to knock the fly off and cut a tip off his nose. <laughs> well, that hurt, so he dropped the razor and he cut a tip off his toe. <laughs> well, he went to the doctor and the doctor sewed his toe on his nose and his nose on his toe. <laughs> <laughs> so now you see a straight razor. Uh, you know, we used to get together and make music. Made a lot of music. Uh, Miss Robinson's uncle, Boyce, oh, okay. and uncle, he had a bro younger brother Charles. named Charles. They were in a string band. My sister played piano. And they had, like, where did you meet? In an auditorium in the gym? Where did you meet? Auditorium. Okay. <laughs> Auditoriums at night would be filled with people, and the string bands would be playing for first place, and and whatever, many times that band won first place because they were the very best. Um, this is a juice harp. I can't put this in my mouth because it's too dirty. But you put this in your mouth and strum this little thing and you make a humming noise. But you get your tongue hung in that little dewey right there and pinch it sometimes. But this is one of their music makers was a juice harp. Or a French harp, I think sometimes it was called. French harp is loaded. Here's a here's a homemade toy that Uncle John's going to show you how to operate. This is called a hood stick. Stand up so 
Now you have to be a magician to make this thing work. If you're not a magician, it won't work for you. When you get old, it's hard to get up and down, too. But you take this little stick here and, and that propeller will move there. So that little propeller That's the way you can make that little propeller turn. And you holler, hooey, and it'll turn and go the other way. Sometimes this stick may not work. It needs to be a, a pencil. That, yeah, it does. That see it going backwards? But when you holler hooey, when you holler hooey and let it stop and holler hooey, it'll turn and go the other way. Go up this way so these children can see it. Y'all can't see that. See it going that way now? And when you holler hooey, that thing will go the other way. Oh. You have to, you have to, you train that, that train. And then you see, you go that way and it goes around and around that way. And then you holler who and it'll turn and go the other way. That's me. Cool. Yeah, all you got to do is holler who and it'll go the other way. Let's see if you can make that work. Awesome. Not, not, don't be You can't even crank it up. <laughs> no, it is. Maybe slow down a little bit. There's an art to making it work. You, oh, you, you got it going that way. Holler hood and see if you can get it going the other way. Oh, he's not. He has a Oh, go, go! He ain't, he, he, he ain't scared it enough, is he? Can I try to face it? Can I try you, you think you can do it? I can, I can do it. it. Well, let's see if she can do it. I don't know. I'm sure how to make that thing work. I can do it. You just, you just right here. Now sit down. Now you got to crank it up first. I don't believe you're a magician. Okay, now how are you going to make it go the other direction? Oh, she's stop. She's going to stop. Can I do it? Can I do it? Can I try it? Can I try it? See, you thought this stick was the magic, but her pencil's got the magic in it too, look there. Hey, can't write it. Then, you say, when you holler hooey, it stops. When it stops, you holler hooey. And sometimes it goes the other way from me, and sometimes it won't. Can I try it? Can I try it? It don't want to go the other way. There it goes. That's right. Okay, you make the hooey stick and see if you can do it when you get home. How do you make the hooey stick? See, it's got all these little notches here cut in it. They had a man that was 90 years old made that hooey stick there. He made this propeller out of a popsicle. Oh, a straight pin. And a straight pin here that holds it on. If you get it going too fast, that pin may pull out and it goes like that. <laughs> I guess that's enough of the trying it, but anyway, uh, we had to make our own toys a lot of times. Well, boys had a top that they could wind a string around and throw it out there and spin. Uh, show them if we only click, John. They can't do this for them to click. Well, anyway, there's another thing that he wants to show you, but are we taking too much time? We can quit at a time. <laughs> no, y'all are doing great. We could keep on and on and on, but we wanted to show you some things that this is not how Crossful used to be, but it's how Crossful children entertained themselves a long time ago. So this is something very few people know about. It's called a wheel and click, and this is how boys entertain themselves. This is what themselves. I used to play with when I was a young boy. Can you get me out? I can get over here. I don't want to get that kind of. You 
get it started. And the best part fast. is to keeping it going straight. So it like this. Yeah. You have to practice a whole lot to make it work it right. It takes a lot of expertise to make it go straight. Because I bet you I have rolled a wheel like that a million miles. I played all over the ground here with the stool out there. See, I hadn't practiced with this in a long time, so it's hard, oh. hard to get to it. So now you know what a wheel and a clip. That's a wheel and a clip. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
What is your earliest childhood memory? Oh, boy. <laughs> you got it. Let's say my earliest childhood memory. I had three little friends, little girl friends, visiting me from Crossville. And we had a swing. You know what a swing on the porch is where two or three people can yes. sit in at one time? We were swinging in that swing, and we, our toes would touch the ceiling, so we could go higher and higher. The chain broke, and the three little girls in the swing fell out, and one little girl broke a two. I guess that's about the first thing I remember. Who were your friends when you were growing up? Now you have to say it again. Who were some of your friends when you were growing up? Who were some? My dogs were my main friends because we had Babbitt Bill close by. My, I would say my dog was my best friend because we didn't have children close by. What kind of games did you play growing up? Now she's told us about all the games. They showed us the, the games that they played. Hopscotch, you know what hopscotch is? Yeah. Okay, we played hopscotch and jump the rope and drop the handkerchief. London Bridge, you know London Bridge? Okay, that was one of our games. And the boys played ball and they climbed trees and played marbles and all those things. What was your favorite sport? All right, Ms. Robinson, you'll have to read. What was your favorite sport? Football. Still is. <laughs> How about you? Uh, I was just saying, yeah. Oh, you were just agreeing with me. Okay, how about you? What was your favorite thing to do when you were a kid? Well, as I told you, I didn't have any playmates. I lived in the, I mean, in the sticks. And my only, my only friend was my dog. Uh, with, like, in the summertime, I remember laying on the grass with the dog and watching the clouds go by. I had a ball, and our house has a tall gable. You know what a gable is, where the roof comes up like this? And I'd stand in the driveway and throw my ball and hit this gable and catch it and do that hours after hours. Do you have a nickname? What? Do you have a nickname? Ain't Bill. Ain't Bill. Ain't Bill. I've got a better name than that sometimes. What is your, what's your question? Do you remember when I got your job? Do you remember about the old jail? Do you remember about Crossville's old jail? I do, indeed, I do. I was not going to tell you that. You remember I told you I had an uncle that was a blacksmith? Mm -hmm. He was also drunk. <laughs> oh, okay. Every Saturday night. Okay, the jail today... Today, the old jail is on the back of what was his property when he was alive. He'd get drunk and the police would arrest him and put him in the jail. He spent more Saturday nights in the jail than he spent at home. They called it a calaboose. And somebody asked me where that word came from, that it's a western word, and how did it come to Alabama? I have no idea. I've not. I've looked it up on the internet, and it just says a lot of people use that um, to mean a local jail, just used locally, but I couldn't find out why it came here either. Oh, I had a good friend from Wisconsin who came to Alabama to visit us, and he, I, he heard me use that term and asked me. And see, I, I had no idea. Yeah, let, me uncle, uncle Lech coming in drunk. let me tell you about my Uncle Lech. Uncle is a big man. Tell me a big man in this school. Is your principal a big man? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kuykendall's the... Mr. Kuykendall, they don't all know him. He's probably the biggest man. Uh, okay, my Uncle Lech was a big, tall man and, and fat. Not fat, but muscular. And he'd get drunk. So he'd come home on Saturday afternoon and lie down on the bed to take a nap. And so his wife could keep up with him. She'd tie him to the bed. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd call his neighbor across the street to come and untie him. They said he'd lay there all afternoon and say, Uh, oh, Frank, uh, Frank. He wanted Frank to come over and untie him. But see, Frank wouldn't untie him because his wife knew how to keep up with him. He came home from Birmingham one time in an old vehicle. If you're in 
Collinsville coming up Highway 11 from Trade Day. You know where Palm Valley is? And you have to turn left to come toward Crossville. The church used to have steps that went straight up. Uncle Lake drove his car straight up those steps. And it was drunk. So Knock the handrail down. So I know a little bit about the job. Thanks for asking. Let me tell you one other thing about him. I had a barber. You remember Miss Ship who came and told you about Crossville? Her daddy was the barber. Had one barber chair. And Uncle Lance sat down at the barber chair and wouldn't get up on a Saturday afternoon. Nobody could get Lick to get up out of the barber chair. And my daddy was his oldest brother, but he was a small stature man. He was John size. So my daddy came to Crossville and said, Let get up and come on. And they said Uncle Let got up and followed him like a little puppy dog. And they asked Daddy how he could control Let like that. When he was a little boy your age, these two little boys were playing marbles. And they had a dispute. And my daddy had his marbles in a sock. And he wound the sock up and hit up the leg in the side of the head with his sock of marbles and knocked him down. So I never have had any trouble with him since then. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for inviting us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How were the holidays celebrated? Well, it was pretty much another day because we didn't have we didn't have a vehicle to go somewhere in. It was pretty much just another day. Uh, at Christmas time, Santa Claus would come. Uh, we might get an apple and an orange and maybe one toy. One time, John got a knife, and that's all he got. And I'd usually get a doll or something, but Christmas was the the main holiday. <coughs> what is your full name and why did your parents choose that name? Are you named after a relative or yeah? My name is Billy May. My daddy's name was William. So the Billy's for him. And my mother's youngest sister was May, so I got her name. I hate the name Billy May. Oh. But when I was growing up, most girls had double names. Notice that yeah. in my age, people. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Lee, you know yeah. Jimmy Lee? Yeah. Clara May was mm -hmm. her sister. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your grandmother's name? Um, Cleo, but I don't... But she didn't have a no. double name. Well, I'll, I'll not so. everybody did. But the Lindsay girl, Nanny Lou, was uh -huh. named. See, so yeah. I don't know about that thing, but so many of the Names. people had double names. Right. That boy won't shake hands. Yes, what? How old, How old am I? Oh, mercy. Let me tell you something. You're fixing to get in trouble there. I tell you, you never should ask a lady her age or how much she weighs. Oh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm 81. I was born in 1928. John was born in 1921. We've been around a long time, but we consider ourselves blessed because people who are younger than we are in nursing homes are incapacitated. And we're somewhat handicapped, but we're still up and moving. When my mother and daddy moved back to Crossville out of Georgia, moved back over here, they were 300 65 people lived in Crow, and that was all. Wow. And my mother bought an electric iron, the first one she ever had. She bought it from the power company for a dollar and 25 cents. <coughs> wow. And she paid for it a dime a month until oh. she got it paid for. And that was in 1937. That's neat. She, she paid for that iron. Now, what's your on. question? Is there any infamous or 
Are there uh, famous people in your family? Any infamous or famous people? I think she's told about her uncle, but uh, he might be infamous. <laughs> Uh, John, I think, is the only famous person in the family because he worked on the Enola Gay, and that's quite, that's yeah. quite a, a that's record to have. Yeah. I had a brother and a sister. My brother was principal of a high school in DeKalb County. He's dead now, so, so is my sister, but she lived here in Crossville. Anybody here know Gene Hugging? He's the pharmacist at the drugstore. His mother was my sister.
Girls, y'all need to have a seat. No, I was helping her. 